Everybody. Why don't we go ahead and get started? We have uh, quite a bit of material to cover, so uh, we'll start promptly. Uh, my name is Alan Halakmi. I am a solutions architect in the Worldwide Partners team. Uh, I support consulting and SI partners. Um, our session today is going to cover the Workspaces Application Manager. Um, and that's a lot of words, so I'm going to call it WAM for the rest of the presentation to save like 10 minutes. Um, and for the session, I assume that you have at least an intermediate level of experience with AWS. So if you're coming in and you're not familiar with some of the fundamentals around EC2 or IAM, then I encourage you to enjoy the presentation, come back to it uh, on YouTube, and parts of it I think will make a little bit more sense. Um, there's quite a bit of material to cover. And so please hold questions to the end of the session, and then I'll be uh, up here afterwards and uh, happy to take any questions that you have. So just in terms of expectations for the session, um, I really want you to learn two things. One is uh, how to use WAM in your workspaces environment. And the second is how to leverage it uh, in a highly controlled environment. So if you look at a lot of our online documentation, uh, demos that have been done uh, so far with this product, uh, it assumes that you have workspaces that have internet um, or elastic IP addresses or uh, in some way have uh, the ability to connect with um, our API endpoints for WAM um, directly. And for the purposes of this uh, symposium and the folks that are here, most uh, of you will care about how to operate this in a controlled environment where your end users don't sit on the internet directly. So I'll provide some uh, guidance on how that can be done. So as with everything at Amazon, we start from uh, the user and work backwards. And so we're going to start with a hypothetical customer called the Urgent Missions Administration, because nobody here works for a place like that. And uh, we will call it UMA. And their IT organization's mission is to provide expeditious configuration of desktop environments uh, to business uh, applications. So they're sitting in their morning meeting on Monday, and they learn that there is a new project, and by the end of the week, they need to deliver a uh, user environment for 100 users in a new project uh, environment in AWS, or potentially in AWS. They're evaluating that. Um, and uh, there are certain mission applications that need to be available uh, for this new project. So there are a set of requirements that need to be met. Uh, the first is that the new environment should have access to common UMA services like the agency's portal and Active Directory. Uh, the system must integrate with the existing Active Directory infrastructure. The organizations put a lot of time and money into uh, a well-architected solution, and they want to be able to leverage their existing identity structure. Uh, third, multi-factor authentication is a requirement for the end-user workstation. Next, uh, users must have access to both common services and mission-specific applications and resources in their project environment. Uh, the fifth one here is a catalog should be available of applications for users to self-service based on need. So as the program, this is the Urgent Missions Administration, as the needs of the mission evolve, users should be able to dynamically select the products that they need without uh, engagement of the IT organization. Uh, six, we expect to have both tablet and workstation users, um, and so a uh, multi-device approach is required. And finally, data flow into and out of the project environment uh, must be controlled and inspected. So uh, Uma's left with two questions. One is, uh, can AWS deliver a managed desktop compute environment uh, so the staff doesn't have to manage 100 systems image 100 systems and deploy them, or have to set up and manage uh, a VDI environment. And the second question is really, can AWS achieve all of this and still uh, achieve the requirements that we just highlighted, uh, particularly the tight control of the project environment? So of course, the answer is yes. So uh, very quickly, a recap on workspaces. If you were in the prior session, then this will not be news to you. Um, so we're going to leave uh, Uma aside for the moment and talk about how Workspaces uh, operates and kind of its function in the Amazon uh, suite of uh, enterprise services. So uh, Workspaces provides you a fully managed environment uh, to provision desktop compute resources in an on-demand pay-as-you-go model. 
uh, Workspaces eliminates the need uh, for upfront investments and the complexity associated with maintaining and patching uh, images for a large fleet of physical systems. And obviously, uh, with Workspaces, we are providing you the fully managed desktop environment so you don't have to go build one. Um, provisioning a user in Workspace is very, very easy. Find the user in your Active Directory, pick a bundle for the workspace, and deploy. Um, you can have somebody up and running in minutes. Um, and you can do this all from the, from the console or through API. Uh, if you do it from the console, it's just a very few clicks. One of the requirements we had was for uh, multiple device support. Of course, Workspaces supports that uh, in a variety of form factors. Uh, workspaces will support uh, tablets and workstations, and also zero clients that support the PCOIP protocol. Workspaces also provides uh, really a secure solution, and so I think of it as a VPN-like solution. And this is a question that uh, comes up a lot in customer conversations about workspaces. So just like a VPN, your workspaces client establishes an encrypted tunnel to a public IP endpoint, in this case at Amazon. And after authentication, the user gains access to resources within the customer environment. In contrast to typical VPN implementations, however, the exchange of data between the client and the workspace is occurring over the Teradici PCOIP protocol. So there's no data that is being transferred from the environment to an end user device other than a stream of pixels for the display. We're not doing file transfers and things of that nature. Uh, and even in the case where we support things like a clipboard um, redirection, those things are controllable by group policy. So you really are keeping your data in the confines of your environment. When uh, used with directory services AD connector, uh, multi-factor authentication is available uh, for workspaces. So let's talk about how workspaces is uh, put together. So uh, a workspace instance is launched in an Amazon managed VPC. It is a dual homed, which is to say it has uh, two interfaces. And those interfaces are not bridged, and they're not routed. So they operate independently. ETH0, which we call our management interface in the documentation, connects to a workspaces gateway. And that is the endpoint to which your workspaces client connects. A connection is established uh, over TLS. Exchange occurs for authentication. And a pixel stream is then returned to the client application on the device, tablet, workstation, or Xero client. The ETH1 interface, which we call the primary interface, is extended into the customer's VPC. And from that Ethernet interface, the customer is able to access uh, resources that are in the VPC, out through the Internet Gateway, or back over a Direct Connect or VPN into the customer network. So um, the ETH1 interface you can think of as the kind of default route for everything that occurs uh, in the uh, workspace environment. Um, the ETH0 interface is just used for streaming PCOIP data uh, to the end user. All right, so now that we understand some of the fundamentals of workspaces, let's see how we can use uh, WAM with workspaces. So WAM provides you the ability to curate a catalog of applications, simplify deployment, administration, and maintenance of those applications. You can, uh, so WAM applications will come from really one of three places, either the AWS Marketplace for desktop apps. So similar to the Marketplace that we have for EC2, there is one that is now available uh, for workspaces uh, and for the WAM product. You can bring line of business applications, so things that you've developed in-house, whether they are um, you know, batch files or CMD files or if they are compiled EXEs, you can bring those. And lastly, the third type is third-party applications uh, where you've already pre-licensed software. So if you have, let's say, um, a productivity suite, you can bring that into WAM for the purpose of management and distribution. Uh, Amazon WAM applications are delivered in what we call secure virtualized app containers. So this approach allows us to decouple the application from the operating system. And the result of that is that the management and administration of, at scale of both your operating system and your application are simplified. So um, you have the opportunity to, for example, rebuild a workstation if you need to um, 
or to apply operating system patches and not worry about direct impacts on the application or overwrites of files and things of that nature, these two things are operating separately. One is physically on disk, the operating environment, and the other one is operating in a virtualized app container. And of course, because of this uh, decoupling, you're main you don't need to maintain a series of pre-built images for each particular configuration in your uh, environment. And instead, you're maintaining a common image for your workspace, and then you're delivering applications to your users, both required and optional applications, through the WAM uh, service. Ultimately, WAM is going to allow you to reduce your burden uh, on the IT environment and increase user productivity um, to the extent that users can now self-service based on need. WAM also allows you to track in real time the allocation of applications uh, within the environment. So you only have to pay for the applications that are used, and you can see the usage in the environment as application by user or user by application. Um, and as an example, if you're bringing a third party, let's say productivity suite, and you're using WAM to deploy that, and you have, let's say, uh, 100 licenses that you have um, purchased for that third party app, if you see that only 50 of those licenses are actually installed and that's your steady state, then you're getting visibility into uh, an opportunity to reduce cost in terms of your licensing. So not only do you have kind of the right sizing for third-party applications and licensing, um, since WAM features this simple kind of standard Amazon pay-as-you-go um, approach, in the case of WAM, it's monthly per-user pricing, uh, the requirement for upfront investments in software and hardware is removed. Um, the management and deployment of the applications and the operational expense of that is also uh, reduced. You don't need to build, as many organizations do, labs where you kind of test out your new image and you put all the applications on there and you kind of see if they play well together. Um, and then you maintain that kind of in perpetuity and go through a testing process every time you have a patch to make sure that the cohesive image, the 50 of them you have, uh, all continue to work. And in point of fact, uh, as part of the WAM product, we provide you uh, what we call Admin Studio to build your virtualized app containers in um, uh, the WAM um, Player Studio for the purpose of testing the application, uh, the virtualized app container. So in terms of the three ways you can bring applications to WAM, as I mentioned, the first is uh, AWS Marketplace for desktop apps. Um, we have uh, over 100 apps in 11 categories. It's one of the sources, as I mentioned, for you to pull in uh, applications for client use. Um, one of the major advantages we hear from customers about Marketplace in general, and certainly it extends to uh, the Marketplace for desktop apps, is that you don't need to enter into individual contracts with vendors and you don't need to sign up uh, for contract terms in terms of length or duration of licensing. Since we offer an on-demand pay-as-you-go model and you're getting it through Amazon's marketplace, you'll get that uh, bill from us as part of your consolidated uh, AWS uh, charges. And the um, desktop apps marketplace today has a kind of a wide variety of products um, you can see on the chart here, uh, we have Office 2013 and uh, McAfee VirusScan, Python, and 7-Zip. Uh, we have quite a few applications that are available from the marketplace. The other two ways that you can bring applications to WAM, as I mentioned, were line of business applications and third-party software that you've already licensed. So to do this, you have to go through a process to build this secure virtualized app container. So you'll take your installer, your binary, whatever the case is, and you will um, launch the Amazon WAM uh, Admin Studio. This studio then goes through the process of watching your install or watching your execution to compose the virtualized app container. Once that process is complete, I'll go back a slide. Once that process is complete, uh, you validate that using the Amazon WAM Admin Player. So you're gonna do a test and validation activity. When you've approved it, that goes into the WAM console, and you're now able to add that product into a catalog. So you have applications that have come from these three places. You can curate them into a catalog offering and make those uh, particular software packages, potentially with certain constraints in terms of maximum licensing allowed. Uh, you can put those, uh, or make them available rather, to uh, varieties of users and groups inside of your AD. And then as those folks log 
those folks log into their uh, workspaces client, into their ultimate workspace, they'll see through the WAM client um, interface that they have access to both download and run uh, these virtualized app containers. Uh, so we do support a, a variety of OSs in various modes, 7, 8, and 8.1 for Windows, 32-bit and 64-bit uh, mode as well, uh, user and kernel mode apps, and I'll talk a minute about why that's important. Um, and also, we're able to, in our admin studio, capture not only files that are going on the file system, but we're also able to capture changes that are happening to your registry, services that are installed, um, user accounts that may or may, be, may or may not be provisioned as part of scripting that happens in the install, um, a variety of things, environment variables. Um, we track uh, kind of the full suite of changes that happen in the operating system uh, to effectively create that uh, virtualized app container. So uh, this is uh, an interesting um, kind of feature of WAM, um, which is uh, oftentimes difficult to convey, so I will do my best. Um, WAM offers you four levels of isolation with respect to the virtualized app container. So I'll start with uh, layer one, which is to say that anything that is installed at layer one is physically installed on the underlying operating system and on the file system. So um, you can imagine installing, let's say, uh, a driver for uh, an antivirus product or a DAT file that needs to be available at the time the system is booting. So it needs to be physically on the disk, and it needs to be running before the WAM service and client are potentially running. So one is we put it on the disk, and it stays on the disk. We make no attempt to clean up any files that are placed after uh, the user uninstalls. At layer two, we do try to remove the files. So things still go onto the underlying uh, OS and its file system, um, but we make an attempt to remove those files if the system uh, package, rather the app container, uh, is uh, uninstalled. Layer three is our default layer. Um, at this layer of virtualization, everything runs in the context of the virtualized app container. There is nothing that is actually resident on the underlying file system. And the application execution is visible to other applications that are running uh, in the context of the workspace. Uh, so normal operation would be at uh, layers, uh, layer three. The last layer, layer four, is a very interesting one. Um, at four, you are able to completely isolate your application into the context of its virtualized app container. So the reason that I find this so interesting is um, many people operate websites and have web applications, and they're testing for compatibility, for example, with web browsers. So using uh, layer four isolation, you're able to run, let's say, IE 7, 8, 9, 10 in individual uh, virtualized app containers. They're not aware of one another, which means that you don't have to deal with DLL conflicts, um, you know, any of this uh, dependent library um, kind of circular logic that goes on sometimes during upgrades. They're able to operate independently. If you're a developer, that also means that you can have a legacy development environment that's operating completely in a container that is separate from your current uh, development environment if, for example, you're making changes to some legacy uh, code or a legacy application. And uh, one last feature that I uh, think is worth mentioning about WAM, it's a very feature-rich uh, service. Um, we do have something called configurable app events. And the notion here is that when the application is being installed on the workspace's uh, end user's instance, there may be activities that you need to execute as part of the operation and installation of the package. So for example, you, you may need to create um, a local user account for that application. Or maybe you've installed the productivity suite and you need to get a license key from a key management server. Those things can be scripted as part of the package install using the configurable app events in the admin studio. So getting back to our urgent missions administration, they have decided, in point of fact, they are going to use workspaces and Amazon WAM. So I want to take a moment here and look at the uh, design that's being used. Um, I mentioned uh, at the beginning that one of the things I want you folks to take away uh, from the conversation here is that it is possible to operate workspaces and WAM um, in a highly controlled environment. So the design here shows a VPC 
uh, it's really a VPC architecture, a VPC design that's based on, a sam on sample reference architectures that we provide in our FedRAMP and in our DOD white papers. It uses something that we call a common services VPC. And that common services VPC is the VPC responsible for um, arbitrating access to the internet and to on-prem uh, resources. So you'll see in this uh, common services VPC, um, we have Active Directory, we have the UMA portal, and we have a proxy. There's a dev test VPC on the left side. That dev test VPC is there for the purpose of, for us and for our demo, um, going through the creation of a virtualized uh, app container. On the right, and during our demo, we will actually create a new uh, environment for the mission um, and for this project. The important thing to note about both of these VPCs on the bottom is that they have no external connectivity. They don't have a virtual private gateway and they don't have uh, an internet gateway. The only mechanism by which they are able to commute with, communicate rather with something outside of their context is by going through the common services VPC and leveraging that proxy. Now this is important because all of the services that we're going to be running with WAM require access to uh, Amazon public IP endpoints for WAM. So there are mechanisms that are available for effectively using a proxy environment. So let's see how this maps against the requirements that we had up front. So we have access to a common services VPC, both our dev environment uh, and our production environment, our new production environment, will be able to leverage that for both common services and for transit uh, to other resources that are outside of their context. We had a requirement to log in with existing AD credentials and through the use of our AD connector, we'll be able to connect to domain controllers that are living in our common services VPC that are part of the on-prem uh, AD infrastructure. We have a requirement to integrate with existing MFA solutions, and our common services VPC is providing us a radius server that delivers that capability. We also had a requirement to access production resources from the common services VPC and business-specific applications that are running in our mission context. And you can see that in the bottom right with the business app. Uh, obviously, we want to be able to deliver desktop apps to users. That's what the session is about. And so we'll be able to deliver WAM applications to our uh, users through this um, arbitrated, controlled access uh, with our common services proxy. So I mentioned that we want to keep this enclave type of uh, configuration where there's no direct ingress or egress without a uh, control point. So we're going to be leveraging our um, Workspaces client to provide that VPN-like service into the environment. And then lastly, um, we have a requirement to control uh, traffic into and out of uh, our uh, mission VPC in the bottom right. And again, we accomplish that through our common services VPC and the uh, arbitration of access that's occurring there. All right. So um, before we get into the demo, just a couple things. Um, the demo is, uh, is definitely a um, TV cooking show demo. So when I launch the workspace and it's available two seconds later, um, it doesn't really happen that way. Um, so I will be moving through it on the front end. It's actually fairly quickly because a lot of it is EC2 configuration and I'm assuming that you know how to do that. Um, I do want to mention, because I won't have time to mention it uh, during the walkthrough, um, that um, I am using um, uh, an Amazon EC2 feature called Simple System Manager. And so you'll see that in my EC2 instances, I'm able to log in directly without doing the kind of get Windows password activity on the EC2 console. And I'm also doing that in the context of an isolated VPC. So there's some proxying that's going on with the EC2 config service and with the uh, simple system manager. Um, and the other thing I just want to mention is actually what the goal is, right? So we have an environment. We want to create a new project uh, environment, a new mission VPC. And we're going to see it from the administrator's perspective and from the end user perspective. The end user wants simply to get onto their workspace, be able to access a PDF reader, and to be able to um, access a Kindle for PC to act for the purpose of reading some ebooks, right? So that's kind of our context. So let's go ahead and kind of walk through um, the demo. All right, so we have our common services VPC that's pre-configured. 
we have our AD connector in our dev test environment, and it's pre-configured. So we're going to set up our admin studio to record the container. We're going to use player to validate it. After that, we're going to create the new mission VPC and set up AD connector with multi-factor authentication. Once that's done, we'll go back to the AWS console and configure our catalog. We'll go back in, launch a workspace, and attach the workspace as the end user, pull down some applications, and see how WAM works. So we're going to start at the top, going to EC2. And once you access the workspaces console for the first time, we share with you two AMIs for the admin player and the admin studio. Um, and so we'll go ahead and launch this. I'm going to uh, select the recommended instance type, which used to be an M4 X, uh, M3 extra large. It's now an M4 extra large. And I'll put that in my uh, dev test VPC. And I realize that you can't probably see this tiny font. We'll select the directory. And I'm going to use the Amazon WAM app packaging role. I have attached this SSM role to that as well to provide that feature. Because I'm using a proxy, I need to let Windows know about that so WAM client and the WAM components work properly. And then I'll go through the process uh, here to launch. All right. So kick off my EC2 launch process, and within seconds, it's available. I will, S I will RDP into my Bastion host and my Common Services VPC. And from there, because it, remember, these instances don't have external connectivity, I will go into my admin studio instance. So the first thing I need to do is get the app that I'm going to go install into my app container. So I'm going to go out to Amazon and download the Kindle for PC app. Put that on my desktop so I can get to it easily. And now I'm going to start my admin studio. So in the admin studio, there are a series of options that kind of steps you through it. Um, but first off, I'm going to give uh, my uh, application a name, my app container a name. We'll call it Kindle for PC and a quick description therein. Um, I'm going to make it available for Windows 8 and Windows 7. So I just want to note here that we talked about the configurable app events. That's available as part of the settings uh, in the uh, console uh, of the application here. We don't actually need that for this demo, so we'll kind of skip past it. I'm going to give a version label in the top right. We'll say this is version 1.0.0. And now I'm ready to actually start the process of capturing uh, information about the instance. So I browse to the installer. And I'm going to track the installer process and subprocess only. If I wasn't bringing an installer, I would need to select all processes if I'm like launching a batch file, because there's no process tree uh, to follow. So I'll go ahead and launch. And now, um, in this case, Kindle PC is actually running through an install. And Amazon WAM Admin Studio is creating a virtualized app container and capturing all the changes happening to the underlying uh, OS and file system um, to build the app container. So you can see it's all running. Um, and so I'll stop that process. I'll go back and close my Kindle for PC. And notice in the background, I have some preloaded books. And I really have like zero desire for those to be part of my package. So we're going to take that out in just a second. I need to identify where in my container the executable is. And that's what I'm doing here. And then along the bottom, I have the ability to access the files that have been changed, registry entries, uh, services that have been installed, environment variables and so forth. And so uh, in this case, because I don't want those preloaded books to be available as part of the distribution, I'm going through and I'm removing each of these covers and the content. You'll notice that by default, this is at layer three of our isolation model. And I could individually go to files and change them to one, two, three, or four. So I'm just going to go through here and delete all the references to those preloaded uh, ebooks. All right. So with that out of the way, I'm now done. And I'm going to upload the package into the uh, Amazon Web uh, workflow. Now, once it's uploaded, I need to go through a validation step, right? So I've created a virtualized app container. I want to confirm that it operates properly. So I'm going to log out of uh, my admin studio. We're done with that. Now I need to log into the player and confirm that the application runs. All right, we've launched the admin player. We'll go back into our Bastion host. And from there, we will RDP into our uh, admin player instance. 
Again, notice that since I've used SSM, I'm not having to do any password, Windows password retrieval process. These instances are auto-joined to the domain. All right, so I'll launch uh, my admin player, and I see that I have one application container pending for Kindle for PC, so I'll do an install. Now, note when this comes up that you won't see any of those pre-installed ebooks, right? Those have been removed uh, as part of the container kind of cleanup that I did uh, after the install. So I actually want to verify that this works. I'm actually going to do a login uh, to Amazon and see if I can't get some of my uh, uh, Amazon docs downloaded as ebooks. So it looks to work. So we'll close this. Uh, I'm going to uninstall it, although you don't really need to, and then uh, I'll approve it. So this application container is now available um, in the uh, WAM console for inclusion into a software catalog or a product library. So we're done with the player. So the next step is going to be to create the new Mission VPC. And to save a bunch of time here, um, I've created a CloudFormation template that will create the VPC, peer it to the central services VPC, um, establish the routes. But of course, I need an AD connector. So one of the first things that I'll need to add in my parameters is credentials um, that will allow the AD connector to access the AD environment. Um, I use administrator credentials here for the demo. Please don't do that in the real world. Um, and I'm also using a Lambda function to create my AD connector. So uh, we'll kick off CloudFormation, and of course, in three seconds, I have an entire environment. Right, it's a TV cooking show here. And you'll see if I look at the output that I actually do have an AD connector directory ID. So that was completed successfully. But I also need to configure my multi-factor authentication in the context of that AD connector. So I will go over to my directory details, to the multi-factor authentication, and put in the information about the Radius server that I have running in my common services VPC. When I click Update Directory, we will Amazon kicks off a workflow behind the scenes to go through the process of actually adding that. Give it a few seconds, click back on multi-factor authentication, you will see the process is complete. All right, so at this point, I have successfully set up my new mission VPC, the AD connector is in place, and multi-factor authentication is enabled. So now let's go to the Workspaces WAM console and build the catalog. Remember, I have two types of apps that I want to bring in. I want to bring in an AWS Marketplace app for a PDF reader, and I want to bring in the Kindle app that I created. So the first step is we'll go to our AWS Marketplace for desktop apps, and I'll do a search for PDF. And uh, I find that I have one here, and I will agree to the terms and conditions so that I can access it and distribute it. Um, but there is an interesting condition I want to place on this. I only want to allow 10 installations of this particular uh, workspace uh, application to be uh, deployed in my environment. So as I go back into the application detail, I'm going to put a constraint on it and limit it to 10 installs. All right. And it's great that I've now you know, limited 10 installs, but there are no users that have access to the application yet. So I need to go down to this uh, add users or groups. And now I'll go through the process of searching in the context of my AD with the AD connector uh, that I set up. I'm going to look for new mission uh, users that are in the new mission group. I'll add them as authorized to access this application. I'll set it as an optional install type so they can select to install it. Things that are identified as required install are forced onto the end workstation. All right, so I'm done there. And I've finished making available this marketplace app to folks in that new mission group. Now I also want to bring in my Kindle for PC uh, virtualized app container and make that product available. So I will go through that process here, give it a name, give it a description, and I really do write, type this fast in real life. Um, support information, who to contact if they have a problem with the app. And I will select the Kindle for PC package from the list of uploaded and validated uh, virtualized app containers. I'll put no maximum install on it. And I'll go again to review. Looks good. All right, so now I have the Kindle for PC 
app is part of my catalog, but again, it's not been granted to any user. So I'll go back in. Now we'll grant it uh, to my, uh, in this case, I actually want to make it available to everybody that's in my domain. So I'll look for my domain users in this particular uh, AD connector. And I will grant access to all domain users for the uh, Kindle for PC application. Now, I talked about the installation type. If you look to the right of that, you'll also see auto update, which I've left as yes for both applications. This means that if I have a subsequent patch, that patch will automatically be pushed to the virtualized application containers that are deployed. All right, so this all looks good. Um, and so at this point, there's one more thing I need to do as, as an administrator, and that's going to be to launch the workstation, uh, the workspace's uh, end user experience. All right, so this all looks well and good. You can see the usage tab, as I mentioned before. You can see information about usage by application or by user. All right, so let's go ahead and launch a workspace. Uh, we'll go ahead and put it in this uh, new mission VPC that I articulated. And I had previously created a new user in my AD um, that'll be the recipient of this new workspace. So we'll look for the new user. Pick the user, select the workspaces bundle, and we are ready to deploy. It is really that simple to get a new workspace deployed. All right, the workspace is ready. So we're done with the administrator experience now. Now we're going to look at it from the perspective of the end user. We send an email to the end user with something called a registration code. And after they've installed their workspace's client, they can enter that registration code, which ties that client to this new VPC. And you'll see, because I articulated in the configuration a need for multi-factor authentication, username and password are required, as is that multi-factor authentication token. I click Sign In, and I'm establishing that cryptographic tunnel between my workspace and my client. So we'll put that into full screen mode. All right, so I'm a new user. It's my first day. Let's go to the UMA portal and see what they recommend that uh, us newbies do uh, when we join the organization. So launch my web browser, go to the portal, bold letters, new mission users, be sure to download this file. Well, the problem with this file is that it's a PDF, and I don't have a PDF reader. So as a user, I can install the Amazon WAM client. It's on the desktop by default when you launch a new workspaces uh, instance. It's a fairly quick install. And when the installation is complete and the WAM client launches, I will see the um, application set that has been made available to me or those applications I'm authorized to use. All right. So I need to get a PDF reader. And so I'll select the PDF reader that was uh, made available through uh, the AWS Marketplace. And I'll install that uh, on this uh, workstation. Now, this is kind of the prove that I'm not lying part, right? I'm going to download the, uh, the PDF, rather, onto the desktop, and I'm just going to show you it doesn't have an association, and Windows doesn't know how to launch it, right? So I'll go back to my WAM client, install the package, and keep in mind all of this request response with the WAM client is streaming through the Common Services VPC and that proxy, so I'm maintaining control over data into and out of my environment. All right, the virtualized application, uh, which is running at layer 7, is uh, up, and I see I have a, a launch plan for new users, Let's see, uh, my first week, what do I need to do? I develop a bio, OK, whatever. Ah, I need to install the Amazon Kindle for PC so that I can start to learn about various uh, AWS uh, capabilities through their e-documentation. Uh, e All right, so I'll close this out, and now I'll launch Kindle for PC. And I'll go through the process again of actually logging into the Kindle for PC upon launch. All right, log in. And uh, now I'll see the ebooks that I have slated to review. And you'll see 
It's very quick to open them up. And again, all the exchange that's going on outside the context of this mission VPC is occurring through that common services VPC for arbitration of access and for deep packet inspection. So now that I've created the entire environment, my new users are good to go, and I can go home early. All right, so we built a new project VPC. We launched the Amazon workspaces, and we deployed applications for the users uh, using Amazon WAM. I appreciate your time. I'm going to stay up here for a couple of minutes. If you have questions, uh, please come and see me. Thank you.